Good morning, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good morning, Europe. Hello, everyone. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Lodo a taiba. Dzień dobry. Bonjour tout le monde. Hello, Europe. We want the EU to get closer together and we want to make people demonstrate for cohesion, not for separation. Irish Nobel Peace Prize winner, John Hume, on his first trip to this border town of Strasbourg as an MEP in 1979, noted the simply remarkable transformation of the French and German relationship. This transformation is the authoritative example of peace created by European integration. The peace in Ireland that Hume fought so hard to build is the natural successor to the post-war diplomatic repair of Europe half a century earlier. We, in Ireland, enjoy a deep appreciation of EU values. Values and ideals that have benefited not just us, the children of Irish peace, but you, the children of the new Europe. Garamil Magov. I know that it is easy to feel uh, a bit hopeless and lost in today's world as young people, but I want to take this opportunity to encourage us to not expect change to come uh, from leniency and just uh, words of criticism maybe shared on social media, but change will come with action and resistance if necessary. So I want to encourage you all to remember to vote if you are able to this year in May or in the next elections when they arrive. Thank you for your attention and your time. Good morning to everybody. My name is uh, Dimitrios Papadimoulis. I come from Greece. I'm vice president of the European Parliament. Among my duties in the Bureau of the European Parliament it, I, uh, are the duties related with uh, gender equality, with diversity, the relationship of the European Parliament with the trade unions, with the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and also communication strategy. I am uh, ready to hear work, your questions and to answer uh, on that. My name is Hedimisia Zoe, I'm from Greece, and I would like to ask what measures does European Parliament take to uh, deal with the rise of fascism? Thank you. The European Parliament voted with a very large um, majority, more than 70-75%, a resolution against the rise of the extreme right and uh, mainly against the violence that the rise of the extreme rise, uh, right brings in our daily life in uh, a lot of countries, not only in Greece, but also in Germany, the Netherlands, in Poland, uh, in Hungary, we have uh, victims who are murdered or injured from uh, heavy attacks uh, from gangs belonging to the extreme right. There are some uh, um, very dangerous political groups uh, who are belonging to the same values like Hitler or Mussolini. I think that the answer is more democracy, political, social and moral isolation of that extreme right and also the implementation of the rule of law. Nothing against ideas but criminalization of the criminal actions. In Greece we have a big um, case in front of the justice because the Golden Dawn, the most extremist part of the European uh, extreme right, uh, um, is in front of the, of, of the court for criminal actions which are against our constitution and against our criminal law. And I, 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 I wait uh, very carefully for the final decisions of the court. But uh, I think that the main point is all the people to stand up and to fight for their rights. And all the people have the same rights, no matter of their uh, color of their skin or their religion or their political affiliation. That is democracy and that 
is the only way to fight against the fascism and the neo-nazism. What do you think about Article 13? It's about uh, copyright, copyright on the internet, and I think it's a little bit close to censorship. It is a long uh, debate. I, I try to make the long story short. Um, up to now, we didn't have rules about the share of information and news via the internet. So, the giants of the internet, like YouTube, Facebook, Amazon, etc., could have a lot of profits without paying, paying anything to the writers, to their journalists, to the artists who are producing their work. We try to put some limits on that in order to push, to make obligatory to the giants of the internet who has a very high profits in an annual basis, to give a part of their profits to the people who are preparing the material they are using via the internet. And at the same time, to protect the independence, uh, the citizens or the small and medium enterprises who are working via the internet in order not to be disappeared. It's a difficult case to fight the right balance. But I have to tell you very frankly that the idea that uh, the legislation that we are negotiating the European Parliament with the Commission and with the Council is fighting against the liberty of um, expression or against uh, the normal people or against the small and medium enterprises is a totally fake news. I think that the real problem is that the giants of the internet do not want to pay anything as right for the journalists, for the artists, for the producers who are working, uh, producing a lot of things who uh, are part of uh, the um, work that they are providing, the giants are providing, getting a lot of profits, but not paying the producers. This is the main question. Thank you very much for your question, but I think that is a debate which has to be continued and in which we have a lot of propaganda and a lot of fake news uh, prepared and presented from the giants of the internet. Hello, my name is uh, Fatima, I'm from Belgium. As we all know, everyone has the same rights, but some members of the European Union still don't recognize the marriage for all, by that I mean the LGBT community, and this is against the human rights. So my question is, what is the European Union doing for to solve this problem? Thank you. Thank you for your question. I'm on my duty as, as Vice President of the European Parliament, is um, fighting for uh, the rights of everyone, respecting the diversity. And respecting the diversity means also the respecting the LGBTI rights. So the European uh, Parliament has adopted with a very overwhelming majority um, a lot of resolutions supporting that approach that every person has the same rights, no matter of his or her sexual orientation. This is implemented in many countries, um, uh, including my country, Greece, but there are also some other countries in which the LGBTI community has no equal rights. They are facing a lot of discrimination and also in some uh, mem uh, states, uh, members of the European Union or outside the European Union. 
they are facing also uh, danger for their lives. There are criminal actions sometimes against members of the LGBTI community. I think that it's a democratic responsibility for all the human uh, uh, civilization to push for having the same rights for every person, including the LGBTI community. And me personally, I, as the responsible vice president of the European Parliament, I will keep fighting for that right. It's a matter of democracy. It's a matter of respecting of basic democratic values and human rights. It's a part of uh, the uh, convention prepared 30 years, 70 years ago from the United Nations. It's not something extraordinary. It's a matter of democracy. The first one uh, requests the European, European Investment Bank to invest more on research or researching on renewable and clean energy. The second one uh, designates all member states to follow Germany's model on rewarding people who recycle plastic bottles with a small amount of money. The third one introduces the environment cl environmental classes in schools in each, uh, each member state's curriculum choice. And the fifth one uh, requests the European Investment Bank to dispatch finance, financial incentives, incentives to businesses in order to arouse the commitment to the renewable energy transition and provide them with further grants upon achieving certain thresholds of the said transitions. Our society today is based on energy and we think as a committee that uh, the debate today was uh, has fulfilled all the uh, res uh, resolutions that we should have uh, put forward uh, today. We came up with six proposals which I will explain briefly to you all now. The first one is that people should be told that they are being monitored. Monitoring is something that happens currently, but it's not often extremely clear. So we decided that it should be clearly stated as people sign into a website or into an app that they will be monitored by key terms. Our second proposal links into this, and it is that there should be proof before there is action. So before somebody goes looking into your personal data, they have to have proof, and this would come from monitoring and picking up on keywords. Our third proposal then was on LGBTQI marriage. We said that this should be a legal right in all EU countries, and this falls in line with human rights. Number four, we moved on and we said that security searches should be done by a member of the same gender. We said that this means a male for a male and a female for a female. We decided collectively that a lot of people are not ready to vote, a lot of young people are not ready to vote because there is a lack of information provided to them about who they're voting for, and what they're voting for and what technically the EU elections are. We decided that in schools, especially because voting starts at a young age, we would start in schools, seminars or lessons that would increase in frequency towards as the election period gets closer, which would explain more about what the elections are, the different parties, what the different parties believe in, so that children and young people have more of an idea on what options they have and what choices they have to vote for. We also decided that we would promote online surveys, which would be anonymous, to see what party would be most tied in with their opinions. So a young person could sign on and be welcomed by questions like statements stating, such as taking into account some of these topics, uh, topics about environment and saying five, four, three, two, one, I would agree this much, I would agree this much, I would agree this much. And in the end, you would be given a result as to which party you would be most associated with, which could also help you make your decision. In terms of advertising, we thought that influencers, social media influencers and celebrities saying, including hashtags on Twitter such as this time I'm voting, could spur an interest in young people who keep up so much with social media these days. 
for, for an example, we used Taylor Swift, who contributed so much to the number of voters and young people in the American elections. In terms of social media, we thought that pages tailored to elections sh should be introduced in the different branches such as Instagram, Twitter and Facebook accounts simply for the EU elections so that everybody can keep up with new information that they can be more welcomed on. Antonio Tajani, the uh, Parliament President, once said, we have to change Europe and make it more effective by answering citizens' concerns and building upon what we have already achieved. But speaking about what Europe's future should be, it is a matter of time and good decisions made by brilliant minds. Europe, Europe needs a renovation. It is an amazing project, an amazing idea to have all the countries work as a whole, but in our today's society, it needs some changes and that ev so that every country is pleased. We need democracy and we need more transparency so that all our people are very well informed about Europe's situation. The future should focus on the citizens. Basically, Europe should invest in them and to be more specific, each and every European country should educate its people. Because this is the most durable thing to do. An educated and informed citizen is a responsible one and this is what Europe needs. A good start is this Euroscola Day. EU should continue in, uh, investing in this kind of project like Erasmus Plus and Euroscola. Education was an overly discussed uh, issue in our committee. Our delegates believe that having an harmonized curricula would be a good idea. Ta taking the advantages, each European citizen um, can apply in whatever country they want. Same objects, e exams at the same level, having mandatory and optional classes. Those optional classes will be your voice, our voices. Those mandatory classes will differ from country to country. For example, we can have math, we can have English, we can have the national, the national language. Now, when it comes to integration, we uh, base our proposals on the education, both of immigrants and then locals. So for immigrants, we uh, propose the creation of an online language learning application that can be installed in uh, immigrants' uh, phones, but also they can f be found in libraries in case they do not own phones, uh, where they can learn the language that uh, the, the locals speak so that they can be better integrated. But also, that we can have open dialogues that will be organized by either countries, regional authorities, but also by NGOs uh, so as for the people to get to know the country, the culture of the country they're entering. When it comes to locals, um, we are encouraging member states to have courses at school so that uh, we can educate kids to accept what's different to them, so uh, immigrants coming to their country. And also when it comes to adults, through interactive events and through social media, we can um, make them sensitive to this issue. And lastly, when it comes to the international action of the EU, we propose investment in developing countries. So these countries would, will either be the countries that immigrants and mostly migrants come from, so as to prevent further migration and relieve the EU from the numbers of immigrants that it's uh, accepting annually, but also to countries to which the EU sends uh, an amount of refugees, so that we can make sure that the human rights of these immigrants will be protected in these countries and also that the, the, the conditions in the camps that they're staying at uh, will be uh, humane so as to help integration in these countries too. So youth employment is a crucial issue in most countries and it has been observed in many historical eras and uh, we came to the conclusion that in order to solve that problem we should first focus on the educational system because the educational system is the root of this problem. So the school curriculum has to be improved. Schools have to encourage, motivate and inform young people and help them choose a job that suits them better. A good way to offer young people experience is an extra year in high school during that time, they'll be able to practice. Uh, in addition to that, programs and trips should be promoted, as well as other opportunities, uh, such as the Erasmus, so that students are updated and uh, adjust to the changes. And lastly, um, the creation of a website run by the, by the EU would be very beneficial for all of us as it will show young people 
what jobs are disposable and suitable for them.